The Violin of Your Soul, an audio book by Jason Stevenson. One morning, Max woke up thinking that it would be an ordinary day. He would wear his blue suit and white tie, say hello to his lovely wife still lying in bed, travel to work and make successful business deals with new partners, thus pleasing his boss's wishes and goals. As he approached the yard's gate, two neighbours' Dobermans jumped on the fence growling at him. At first, Max was terrified by the loud growling noise and the dog's frightening sharp teeth. Then he took a deep sigh and continued his way towards the yard's entrance. As he walked down the street, he noticed how passers-by gave him a strange look. Some of them were laughing in his face, while the others were scowling at him. Max was so confused that he started to check his clothes again by trying to see himself in the front of the mirror of a local shop. All he could see in the mirror was a properly dressed man going to work and nothing else that could be disturbing to other people. However, as he turned to continue walking, one man forcefully bumped into him and yelled at him, Watch out where you go, monkey! Max was appalled by such rude behaviour, and he didn't even have time to respond to this man when he, all of a sudden, disappeared around the corner. When he came into the office, the secretary told him that the boss wanted to see him. Max walked into the boss's office and noticed a serious look on his face. He sat on the chair and attentively listened to what his boss had to say. Max, you know that you are one of my highly competent and loyal workers. Yes, sir, Max replied to him. Also, You know that the whole world and our companies are suffering from financial crisis these days. Slowly, Max's boss started to reveal his intentions of the conversation. Yes, of course, sir. Max nodded in his agreement. We are doing everything to cut our spending and costs. Unfortunately, we have to reduce the number of workers. I assure you that you will get your last paycheck. I'm so sorry about your leaving this company, but that's just the way it is. At that moment, Max's face went pale, and he felt as though he was going to fall off his chair down into the floor. But sir, is there any chance for me to stay in the company? Are there any solutions to the company's crisis? No, Max. I'm asking you to resign, and that's my final decision, Max's boss replied firmly. When Max was on his way home, he thought it was all a bad dream. It simply happened to another person, not to him. He thought he didn't deserve any of these things. At home, he didn't find his wife, but only a note saying that she wants a break from the relationship. Max tried to call her on a cell phone, but she couldn't be accessed. All over his body, mind and soul, prevailed shock, sadness, anger and disappointment. Constantly, he was thinking about a revenge to his boss and wife. How they would suffer, and at the same time, the suicidal thoughts occupied his mind. At the end of the tragic sequence of events, Max found himself ending up on the streets. He never imagined himself begging for anything in his life. He was a hard-working and conscientious man, 
He wondered why all of these things happened to him. Why people he thought he knew very well stabbed him in the back. Why were there so many cold and frightened looks? That day when all the tragedies started while he was looking himself in the shop's front mirror, the reality in his eyes didn't match the one of those around him. Maybe he didn't want to notice the signs in the mirror. Tiny, microscopic fractures on his skin and soul were very hard to be seen in the mirror's reflection. Who knew the right answers? Who could predict the disasters that day? Memories started to occupy his mind. He remembered the day he met his wife and how he quit his biggest dream in life to become a violinist. The moment he met his wife, he was happy that he found his companion. But at the same time, he had to choose between a wife and a violin. That was a tough decision. But at the time of choice, the woman, his wife, was the best choice he could ever make. Suddenly, his rambling thoughts were interrupted by the newspapers rustling. All he could see in front of him was an old beggar giving him newspapers for dressing warmly by putting their pieces between their clothes layers because at night it could be pretty cold for those who stayed on the streets. The old guy introduced himself as Randy. Max thanked him for the newspapers and they started a conversation. I haven't seen you here before. How did you end up on the streets? said Randy. I lost everything in a single day, said Max. That's an illusion. Maybe you lost everything in the past life, another reality, or your mind's universe, Randy quickly replied. Randy, please, it's not time for joking, Max said nervously. Randy continued talking. The concept of time you know doesn't exist. It's another illusion. Everything happens now. Then, Max shouted by raising his head to the sky. Thank heavens I've found one more philosopher in my life. Yes, be grateful for everything that happened to you. At the end, the dots will somehow be connected. Choose the path of your soul and the universe will give you the best connections, Randy said without any annoyance. I chose the woman who left me instead of pursuing my long-lasting dream. Being a violinist, Max said with a sad tone in his voice. There is no loss. Violin strings are like universe's strings. Let the harmony of violin give you an insight into a nuanced reality. If the harmony of violin still touches your heart and soul, You'll know the rest of your path, Randy replied to him with compassion. Oh, Randy, I wish so badly one violin right now. Max's eyes sparkled immediately. The universe always listens to you. Be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Listen. I have an excellent idea. Let's go tomorrow to the local abandoned storehouse. I see an artistic flair in you, and maybe we can find something there for us in the waste containers too. People used to throw out so many things without knowing that they could create something new from all that abandoned stuff, Randy explained. Yes, I totally agree with you, said Max. We should go there tomorrow. Anyway, I am so curious about your story. How did you end up on the streets? Then, Randy started to talk about his life story. I was a successful business owner. I had a luxury home, car, lovely partner. But one day everything went downhill. My company went bankrupt and I found myself in huge debts. During that period of my life I encountered many losses too. The worst thing was the emptiness and bankruptcy of my soul. I thought I was alone. But that was an illusion. We walked every day keeping the various bindings in our minds. 
We are blindly bound to our material things and wanted to control other people. But the truth is that there are no things and people that can fulfill this emptiness. I truly embraced the inner emptiness and wanted to understand deeply what it was telling me. I am on my authentic journey living as a beggar without any constraints to my true self. I am free. I am present in the moment. I touch the awareness every day and I know that I am part of its co-creative process. I am an everlasting process. I can create my life's slow motion and I enjoy its sparkling momentum. My whole being is no longer lost in the mind's hustle and bustle of a modern world. A new day came and brought new ideas into Max's life as well. Opening the old and abandoned containers in the storehouse was like opening gift boxes. They didn't know what they would actually find there, but they liked the feelings of excitement and childlike joy. The idea of making one-man band instrument came to Max's mind abruptly. He could enjoy music and use his talent at the same time. Additionally, he could earn some money by street performing too. He found the elastic cables that could help him in binding all the parts together. Piano pedals for the foot drum, plastic tubes that could be transformed into a kazoo, oval metal and wood containers good for producing different sounds, strings, sticks, corks, rubber, hooks, backpack belts and many other things. Also, Randy showed him one old ditched shed in the nearby woods where he could build and store his instrument. Every day he pieced together the parts of his multi-instrument. Sometimes the old parts got cracked or broken, but he never gave up. He continued to improvise or find another piece that could perfectly fit into his creation. He enjoyed the fact of pulling things such as hooks and binders, which were connected in specific ways with sticks, strings and drums, thus producing a large variety of sounds. All parts had to function properly and into a balanced way, and Max was the one in charge of a whole process of making amazing tunes. By pulling all the instrument's parts together, he felt as if he was getting his life back in a harmonious order. In this way, he was a creator of his own life melody. He enjoyed its flow. Max started performing with his creative instrument on the squares, street corners, other public places, and from time to time his musical performance attracted various crowds of people. Every time he could, he tried to save money so that he could repair or buy new parts for his instrument. When he added some new parts to his instrument, it seemed to him that he also breathed new life into it. Some of his performances began with verses which were accompanied by beautiful tunes of his one-man band instrument. His first performance, which included a song, started with these verses. One day I thought the universe couldn't hear A vulnerable echo of my soul I saw a misleading reality mocking itself in the mirror Walking in dark dreams without any sunbeams. That was an illusion. My soul needs revolution. By going deeper and deeper, layer by layer, I want to find my truth by following my path's route. This is my way. With tunes of love, light and peace every day. One day, 
an artistic troupe that was touring the world and recording a video about street performers, saw Max's one-man band act on the streets and asked him to be recorded. Max agreed to their proposal and also suggested playing their violin, which he spotted right away in their orchestra. Not only did the artists like Max's first performance, but they adored even more his second one with the violin, so they invited him to join their artistic troupe, touring the world and recording. Max was so happy for joining the troupe at that moment. As his heart bounced, so did his performing. His videos of the one-man band and violin performances got millions of views. His tunes of love, Light and peace touch the hearts of all people. He shared love, light and peace to the world and felt universal connection with every part of his soul which had been buried for so long. He had found it. Max had come home. <laughs>